probably the the number one thing, right? Building your mind up and personally developing your mind to receive whatever wealth that you can bring in. Hello and welcome to Pillars of Wealth Creation, where we talk about creating financial success with a special focus on business and real estate. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. Now, let's get to it. Hello and welcome back to Pillars of Wealth Creation. I'm your host, Todd Dexheimer. With me, we got Matt Jones. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Todd? I'm fantastic, man. Uh, we are, fingers crossed, we're closing this week on our uh, our newest acquisition. So we should close like today. So I'm super excited that we're going to be closing. We're going to get into the project and rip it. Uh, I, I'm excited. We... Man, I've been wanting to get this thing started for a while. So yeah, we're, we're excited to get going, get rolling, get uh, renovations started and completed and really just change the whole face of this project. It's an exciting deal. So got that. I got another deal that I'm closing on next week. Uh, and I got a, op, a new opportunity that has came to me that we're uh, I think we're going to get this deal done as well. So I'm excited, man. Things are, things are moving. Um, you know, it, 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 it's funny how it, like it rains at times, you know, and as you get this drought at times. And so people who are like, ah, how does, how does Todd have, you know, three deals he's doing all back to back. That's crazy. Uh, people are like, I don't have anything coming in. Just remember, Sometimes it comes in, in uh, buckets, right? And sometimes you don't get a deal. Like, look, the last re- the last deal I closed was, was May of 2019. I hadn't closed a deal since May of 2019. And actually, I still haven't closed a deal. So, uh, but hopefully closing on two and hopefully three soon. Uh, but yeah, I, sometimes it just doesn't happen for a while and you got to be patient. It's frustrating. Uh, but I'm a, you know, I just have, have exercised that patient muscle. I'm a very impatient person, but I've exercised that patience muscle. And uh, deals got to make sense for me. I'm, I'm a conservative person by nature, and a lot of deals don't make sense. Deals got to make sense. So they, they, they don't just fall out of the sky, unfortunately. But, yeah. And I know some real estate investors are seeing 2020 as a gap year. You know, they're not even looking, but there are still deals yeah. out there as, as you know, your evidence of that. Yeah. I mean, look, there's, there's deals out there. You don't, uh, you don't have to rush in to do a deal A 2020, you know, I'm okay. If you want to go, you look 2020, I'm just kind of a wait and see mode. That's okay, I guess. Uh, but you got to decide what's really going to make you pull the trigger. And I asked a, a real estate investor who back in, I think it was like about 2015 said, I'm no longer going to buy real estate uh, because I feel like the market's going to crash. It was 2015, 2016, somewhere around there. He said, I feel like the market's going to crash. And I said, so he said, he's not going to buy real estate. And I said, well, what happens if the market doesn't crash for five to seven years? And he said, well, I just, I guess I'll have to rethink my strategy. Well, it's, it's been, uh, you know, four, maybe five years since he decided that. And we'll see. It could be crashing. I don't know. Um, you know, there's definitely some signs uh, that there's weakness, right? We're in this uh, pandemic recession, uh, but the market's holding strong so far. We'll see where it goes. But, you know, look, he missed out on four to five extremely good years uh, in real estate. And, you know, he could have been buying that whole time and he just chose not to, you know, I don't know. Maybe he'll go, Hey, that worked out perfect if it does crash, but what happens if it doesn't, what happens if it doesn't? And we have another five years go by now it's all of a sudden 10 years and he hasn't done a deal. Is that really what you want to do? So you got to question that for yourself. And maybe you just go, look, I only am going to buy at the low time, I'm going to buy for the first, you know, I'm going to, once it's, once the market's low, I'm going to buy for a two or three year period of time. And I'm just going to wait and I'm going to sit and that's fine. If that hits your goals, if that you know, allows you to achieve what you want to achieve. But for me, it doesn't. Yeah. It all comes down to having the right mindset. I think, 
you know, are you looking for opportunities in the challenges or are you looking for, uh, you know, the deals that can be done or are you just yep. focused on the problems, you know? Yeah. 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 And it, which takes us into today's topic. The, we're going to be talking about the wealth mindset. Before we get to that, Matt, I didn't even ask you, man, how are you doing? What's new? Anything? Well, if you, you know, our viewers are watching this on YouTube or on uh, Facebook, uh, you know, my new background here is my book is coming out here pretty quick in the next uh, week or so from when this airs, it should be on Amazon. So we'll probably talk about uh, that a little bit more in depth in another episode. Uh, awesome. So I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Awesome. That's exciting, man. Um, and then we did, we did the North Star Real Estate Conference and I mm -hmm. thought it went really well. I mean, you and John and uh, Courtney, Erica, the, the team, uh, um, you guys put a, in a, a ton of work and really did an excellent job at the conference. I thought the networking aspect was really good. That was probably the thing I was most nervous about. Like, do we really have this virtual conference? Like, is it just going to be another set of webinars? Like, could anybody just come to it at any time? Or like, they don't have to show up, right? Because they can just rewatch the replay of the webinars. But you know what? If, if you signed up and got a ticket, and you didn't actually show up, you missed out on a huge, huge aspect of the conference, which was the dynamite networking that was able to take place. And I, I was very pleased with how that was and the breakout rooms and even the large session. I mean, we had our, our VIP, you know, mastermind on Friday evening and it was, it was awesome. You know, most of, uh, we had a bunch of speakers that stuck around and they just added a ton of value and a really good, deep conversation. I, I, like if, if you got, oh, it's just a bunch of webinars. It's so wrong. It was the virtual networking was just powerful. And you, and I could, you know, I give kudos to you guys for really believing in that and setting it up and doing an excellent job at it. So. Yeah, thanks. It, it did really go very well. I'm very pleased. Uh, and with any luck, we'll have a, an in-person event in April as well. So uh, yeah, by the way, anybody who's listening right now and you say, well, I'm, shoot, I missed that. Sounds like a great event. It was, by the way, and shame on you for missing it. No, just, just joking. Uh, but look, we've got the live event. Pencil it in your calendars, really thick pencil to make sure that it's in there. I don't think we're going to erase it. Uh, however, you don't know and, and you know 2020 i don't want to say anything uh is in, in concrete but we've got april 23rd and 24th that we've got hard lined into right now our calendar so put that on your calendar get ready we're going to have an awesome live event and uh and probably going to be continuing to do the virtual stuff and and we're going to also be doing just virtual um and maybe in person meetups uh, throughout the year too. So the, anybody can go to nreconference.com. You can get uh, just a part of it. So you can see what we've got coming throughout the year uh, on that. And just, you know, we'll invite on speakers and just have uh, events so people can really just learn, grow, meet each other. Uh, that's what it's all about. Yeah. That's really a key component of obtaining the wealth mindset is surrounding yourself and networking with other people that have the right mindset too. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, look, you, you're, you're not, it's, it's hard to get wealthy by yourself. The, the quickest way to wealth, I guess, by yourself would be to inherit it. Right. Which is not quite by yourself because it requires somebody before you to die. Right. Uh, but the quickest way, I guess the quickest way, if you want to call it by yourself would be to win the lottery, right? Uh, that, that might be it, but you're probably not going to stay wealthy that way. We, we kind of hear the statistics and he, and know that most people that win the lottery lose it pretty quickly. Um, and I think wealth for me is more than just money, but what's the, what's the definition? Are you, you looked up the definition of wealth. What's the definition of it? All right. It is an abundance of valuable possessions or money. Yeah, and, and I think it depends how you interpret that, you know, because wealth uh, could mean a, a various uh, different things that you're wealthy with. So it yeah. could be a, like like we were talking about earlier, uh, possession of your knowledge. Your knowledge is a, a valuable possession, and your yeah. network, uh, you know, access to that is is very valuable too. Yeah, yeah. For for me, I I define 
wealth as a combination of a lot of things, right? I define it as a combination of, of money, okay? So having passive, having, having income that exceeds your expenses, uh, having, having a net worth, so having assets that um, grow by themselves without you needing to put in a ton of work. Um, but then having abundance of, of, uh, you know, of time, of resources, um, having, being able to, being able to do what you want and, and kind of when you want it. So that I see more as wealth. It's being able to kind of have the whole picture, right? Not just be, not just be rich with money, but be, be rich with all blessings, right? Be rich with family and friends and um, be, be rich with life in general. Yeah. And I, I sort of break it down to, you know, uh, my idea of wealth is how long could you survive, uh, you know, living the kind of lifestyle you want, giving, uh, you know, donating to the world and traveling and, and whatnot. How long could you live that lifestyle uh, without working, you know? Yeah. So, you know, if you like burn through your savings in a month, your wealth is only one month worth. But if you have cash flow enough to, you know, live in perpetuity, then that's true wealth in my mind. Yeah, you know, and, and obviously we're on this uh, podcast called Pillars of Wealth Creation. And, uh, you know, when I think about wealth and creating wealth, I think about, you know, maybe six, five, six things. And first thing that comes to my mind is personal development and mindset development, right? Bring your mind up in order to receive the wealth, right? To actually receive it and to think about it and to realize what it is, not to let it capture you, but to let it be uh, abundant in your life, right? Uh, understanding what it is and then thinking bigger than just yourself. Um, so I think that's maybe uh, probably the, the number one thing, right? Building your mind up and personally developing your mind to receive whatever wealth that you can bring in. Yeah. And you know, I would say there's a few books that have really been pivotal or pivotal in my you know, own de development uh, with wealth mindset. Think and Grow Rich uh, is such a powerful yeah. book. You know, I know you've read that. And I think mm -hmm. just about All every, times. yeah, it's just about every uh, real estate investor that I know who's serious has read that book and, and loves it. And, uh, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad is another good one. Richest Man in Babylon. I like the uh, millionaire. I think it's called the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. It's a little in your face, um, but I I think it's like I, I have probably listened to that thirty to forty times hmm. on on CD. I've read it in print probably three or four times. I think that it's a lot of think and grow rich modernized, right? And a lot of books, quite frankly, that are like that are, are modernized. So maybe I got the title wrong, but it's something like that. The Millionaire Mind or The Millionaire Mindset. By, it's by T. Harv Ecker. Just an excellent book, in my opinion. You know, look, it's it's all about your mind when you look at wealth. It's all about your mindset. It's all about getting out of your comfort zone, getting out of your own way, really focusing on, you know, learning, allowing yourself to make those mistakes. Uh, I think those big things are, are, are super important, making sure you continue to work, of course, on your personal development. And understand, I guess, understand your why too is, is, of course, part of that mindset, part of that wealth mindset. Understand your why and where you want to go. I had an interesting podcast interview today with uh, Maurice, who will be on the show in, I don't know, in, in a month or so. And we're talking about how everybody's goals are so much different. You know, his goals, his focus is to be able to travel 
the world. He's been to 96 countries. Like he wants to continue to travel and enjoy life. But at the same time, big part of his life is also make it a positive difference. So like he works for the police force. He doesn't have to. He's got a full-time consulting job. He also owns real estate. He, you know, his real estate pays for his expenses. He doesn't have to have his consulting job. He doesn't have to have his police force job. He doesn't, he owns restaurants. He doesn't have to have those. Like this guy is doing a lot of different things, but part of why he's part of the police force is because he enjoys giving back and he sees that as extremely valuable. If he can help other people out, that's what is achievement to his life. And that's what's wealth to his life. So wealth to him isn't necessarily owning 10,000 units. That is not fulfilling to him. He would rather have, you know, 500 units, maybe even less, but still be able to create the lifestyle and leave the legacy that he wants. So some people, you know, everybody's wealth is different. So knowing your why, knowing what's going to drive you, you know, look, I mean, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, and you know, they have a lot higher threshold of what they want to achieve. That's great for them. That doesn't work for everybody though. That doesn't make sense for everybody. A lot of people don't want that. We don't, you may not want thousands of employees or even hundreds of employees or even five employees right? And, and that's okay. You don't need to live somebody else's dreams. And I think that's a big part of the wealth blueprint or mindset is living your own dream and not somebody else's because they say you should do this, right? Yep. And I think getting started, you know, with uh, you know, trying to change your mind, your mindset, uh, you know, these books or the books that we mentioned are a great resource. And I just yeah. looked up the uh, secrets of the millionaire mind. Secrets of the millionaire mind. That's the one there you're talking you about. Thank, thank so, you. Yeah. I, I don't think I've read that one yet. Well, you need to get on it because it's an, it's an excellent book. Like I said, he's a little, it's a little in your face. He's going to, he's going to slap you around a little bit. If, if your mindset is not like that, he kind of, he kind of is hard on people that, that aren't at that mindset. So you might be offended at times. Uh, but that's okay. It stretches your brain and makes you think. And you you never have to agree with every single word somebody says. But the overall message is extremely good uh, message out there. So I think I think it's a, a great book to read. Look, my, I think a big thing on, on the when we're still talking mindset here and personal development is really realizing that money is is not the solution to your problems, right? Um, wealth, creating wealth doesn't get rid of your problems. Actually, being rich, actually, in my opinion, doesn't mean being wealthy. I think those are two different things. I think wealthy means that you understand what money really is, and money is a tool. And that's, that's really it, right? So you can be rich, in my opinion, and not be wealthy. And that's, that's how I view wealth. I don't view it again, as how much money you have in your piggy bank, how much, how many properties you own, how much stocks you own, all that kind of stuff. I view it as more of how, maybe how much you have, but more importantly, what you do with what you have, right? How you live your life. That's how I view it. So really understanding that money is not a solution to your problems. It actually exasperates your problems. It actually makes it pronounces your problems and it, it it can pronounce though the good things right as well so if you have your mindset right if you have your life together money's a blessing but if you don't look money's actually can be a curse like think about a just the extreme like think about the drug addict and all of a sudden he falls into a bunch of money do you think that's a good thing you know no He's just going to go buy that many more drugs, right? He's going to go party and binge that much harder, right? But if they've got their life together and got their act together, money is a blessing. So, yeah. And I think that's why, like you mentioned earlier, there, you know, so many people who win the lottery, they spend it all uh, and then they're broke again or, or in worse shape than they were before they yeah. won it before too long because they didn't have the right mindset uh, from the get go. And I think that's a, one of the failings of the American educational system. We really don't teach 
you know, entrepreneurship or, or how money works or anything like that. Yeah. 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 So let's, let's dig farther. Um, you know, wealth to me too is about cash flow. It's about building that passive or semi active cash flow um, that provides that financial freedom and provides that life freedom, that freedom to do what you want. And that might be, that might be creating more like, look, like I said, Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, you know, Warren Buffett, you know, there's, I mean, the list goes on. They don't need more money. They've got plenty of cash flow so they can focus on what they, what is extremely important to them. They can focus on what allows them to do what they want and when they want. And I, I don't know if they're, they're wealthy in my definition, but if they are, they're doing what they truly want to do and are passionate about. And that for those guys is creating more, doing more business, making more businesses, changing the world, trying to change it in a positive direction. You know, that's what they're out to achieve in that does necess- that does mean they continue to make more and more money but you know look Jeff Bezos he employs a lot of people and through the products that are sold with his company i mean geez you know there there's a lot of people that are being affected by him so you've got to figure out that cash flow coming in that's building semi active or completely passive income that allows you to do what you really truly want to do. And if that's travel to 96 countries like Maurice, heck yeah, that's awesome. Do it. And I know, you know, Jeff Bezos gets a lot of hate in the media, but the thing is he adds so much value to the world you know, because everybody's using Amazon. You know, people yep. love, you know, how you can just shop and, and get the stuff delivered right to your door. So that's, that's why he makes more and more money because of the value he adds to the public. Yeah. He's hated because he's successful too, by the way. I mean, that's just, so the other thing too, is um, I think appreciation is a big part of wealth, being able to uh, have assets that continue to appreciate. So you can continue to have that wealth. Right. So I think it's not about just getting it. It's about keeping it too. And so buying valuable assets like real estate, uh, like, like even precious metals, um, you know, businesses, those allow you to continue to grow and continue to have appreciation. So part of the wealth recipe is having it, being able to continue to blossom, right? Not, not just go away. And that's kind of that, that passive appreciate or passive income, but now we're talking appreciation at, on the back end. So, yeah. And real estate is such a great uh, resource for appreciation because I mean, you look at the statistics, real estate, you know, goes up and down, but over time always, always goes up and up and up. Yep. Yep. So let's talk about leverage, man. Well, I think that's a, this is a huge part of wealth and there's a couple different types of leverage. We're talking leverage of your money, but we're also talking leverage of other people and other people's time, other people's resources, other people, just other people, right? And when I talk about that, it's 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 not using other people, but it's using, creating value for other people to create value also in your life. And it could be as simple as quite frankly, a leveraging your relationship just is an awesome relationship. It maybe it doesn't provide you anything financially, but it's just an awesome relationship, right? That provides you the value in your, in your spirit. Right? And that in itself is, is awesome leverage, right? But, you know, and, and then of course, leveraging your money financially is going to help you accelerate and build your riches more quickly. Um, and it can also be dangerous too, right? Obviously, if, if we're, we're leveraging too much or if we're, you know, leveraging the wrong people, um, we can definitely get in trouble with that. But man, I mean, talk about powerful tool. Again, leveraging money, but leveraging other people's time, other people's resources, 
and not doing it in a way where you're using people, but you're creating value for everybody involved. Exactly. You know, like a simple example of that is if you're using other people's money to buy real estate, you know, you're giving them a return on their money, but it's also allowing you to make money off of that money too at the same time. So it's a win-win situation, really. Yeah. I mean, look, don't be fooled. My, my syndications, look, they're, they're great for my investors, right? They're fantastic for my investors. My investors want to get into syndications because they want to make money on their money. They've got, a, they've got money that they would like to increase in value, right? But, but at the same time, that allows me, that leverage allows me to go in and buy these pieces of property, which also then creates value for me. So it's, it's creating that win-win, right? The, the leverage that's helping you, but also helps the people that are involved. It's not the leverage that is helps you, but takes advantage of the other people involved. That is not a great situation. That's, that's, that's a very short-sighted situation that does not create wealth. It creates misery, quite frankly. It creates poorness, creates misery. And that, that's, I would say, in my opinion, this is one of the bigger differences between people that are poor or have a poor mindset versus people that are wealthy or have a wealthy mindset is people that have a poor, poor mindset view leverage as bad. They view monetary leverage as bad and they view relationship leverage as bad. They always view it as they're using somebody else. That's how they view it. So somebody would come into my situation like syndication and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're doing that. You're taking other people's money to, to buy these apartment buildings. So you're using these other people to get rich that's how they think, right? But they don't see it as, no, I'm providing my investors an excellent vehicle to invest their money in that they're going to increase their you know, investment income. They're going to have cash flow coming in and they're building appreciation. Plus they don't have to do it themselves. So it's completely passive. So I'm leveraging that to, and, and I'm also providing an excellent tool and vehicle for myself. They don't see it like that though. That's the poor mindset as they view it as, oh my gosh, you're doing something bad by taking advantage of other people, right? Big difference. Yeah. The first step to becoming wealthy is to learn, uh, you know, the mindset to, to learn what rich people know about money that, uh, the poor and middle class don't. And to, and, and to really realize there's a big difference there that wealthy people view money as a, as I already said, as a tool, you know, they, they view it, that it's none other than a, than a, than a tool, a resource. And poor people don't view it like that. And poor mindset doesn't view it like that. Right. It's a necessity. It's a, you know, it's, it's something we have to have and have to live with. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a different type of mindset. So. Yeah. It's being, you know, a slave to the dollar versus mm-hmm. putting the dollar to work for you. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that's another thing, you know, that Maurice, when I talked to him, it was like I said, it was an awesome conversation. And he was talking about that. Like we've lost sight of, of a nine to five job. Like we've lost sight of that actually working a job or owning your own business or all that isn't, isn't to keep on working, right? It's to provide, it's an exchange, right? It's an exchange for goods for services, right? So that, that's all it, it is, but we become a slave to it. And then we've got this society that values buying crap, you know, so you just continue to be a slave to it. When you can learn to not be a slave to money, that's when you can start to create real wealth. When you don't have to buy all the crap in the world just to spend your money, that's when you can create real wealth. Yeah, I think, you know, one one difference, another difference actually between wealthy people versus uh, not wealthy people is, you know, the, the people who aren't wealthy, they tr- buy this crap to try to look like they're wealthy from, you know, they, they use their earned income for that. Whereas wealthy people will use their cash flow to, to pay for stuff. And, and by the way, when, when, 
again, when we're saying wealthy people, it doesn't necessarily mean people that make a ton of money because there's plenty of poor people or poor mindsets that make a ton of money. Okay. They, they might be making three, four or $500,000 a year, but they're paycheck to paycheck. They spend every last penny that they earn. They don't, they view money poorly. They don't have anything that's appreciating. They don't have any cash flow other than the, the job that they work, which isn't really cash flow that I'm talking about. I'm talking about cash flow that you can step away from uh, or you can do very semi actively. That's what, that's what I'm talking about. They have that lack of abundance mindset, that, that no abundance mindset, right? That if they make a hundred dollars, that means somebody else can't make a hundred dollars. Like they totally view money improperly and they are making a ton of money. They've got this great W-2, but they're poor, right? They got a poor mindset. They're not wealthy. And that's only because their mindset is messed up. Their belief around money is screwed up. So doesn't mean being poor, in my opinion, doesn't mean you're just sitting on the streets, right? That's one aspect of it. But you can make a lot of money and still have a poor mindset, still be paycheck to paycheck. So there was a lot of people during the last recession that lost their houses that had a lot of money or, or were perceived to have a lot of money, right? And that's just how it is. So, you know, the other thing is, is uh, I think is both tax savings and just regular savings, right? Uh, I think that's a, another aspect of the wealthy, you know, being able to find the loopholes and the tax codes, um, being able to, um, you know, hire the right CPA. And, uh, and then the other part, the other aspect of savings is, is just regular cash savings. Like they have that rainy day fund. They have money set aside. I call them reserves, right? They have reserve fund for their businesses. They have a reserve fund for themselves. Um, they're ready to weather a storm. And I think that's an important aspect that some people, that especially they're in this growth mindset, which is great. They have no reserves. So if, if uh, things get a little rocky, if a pandemic hits, they don't know where to go and where to turn. Well, once you create that wealthy mindset and, and start creating wealth, you need to make sure that you have that savings, um, that you're finding ways to cut the dollars going out um, and keep the dollars that are coming in. Excellent. Well, we could probably go on and on about this. Uh, well, I got one more, right. I think, important factor. And this is, this is my favorite part of what being wealthy and having a wealthy mindset. And that is giving back. I, and that is the most rewarding part. And that is, I, the best part is being able to give back. And it doesn't necessarily mean, Matt, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're giving millions of dollars away, hundreds of thousands of dollars away. It means you're giving financially of what you are able to, that, you know, that, that 10% type thing. But it also means that you're giving, you know, physically, right? You're giving spiritually, you're giving emotionally, giving mentally, right? You're, you're helping, you know, the, the, this, the disabled, you're, you're lending a hand to somebody, you're helping, you know, kids to learn and to grow your, whatever it might be, um, whatever you're passionate about, I think is so important to be able to give back. I mean, it's a part of who I am. And I think anybody who's creating wealth and who has created wealth, I think that if that is missing, you can't be wealthy with, with that. You can't be wealthy with that missing. I, I don't think you're truly wealthy if you're not giving back. Yeah, I think that's true. What, whatever way that makes the most sense for you, uh, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm passionate about helping people with uh, developmental disabilities. And so I, I give back uh, to help enrich their lives. But, uh, you know, for our listeners, whatever, you know, whatever charities, whatever ways to give back that you're passionate about, focus on that because that makes it more and more rewarding to be able to uh, you know, build your wealth because then you can give more. Yeah. And, and, you know, quite frankly, on a selfish level, um, the more you give, the more you get back, right? The more you give, the more you get back monetarily, spiritually, emotionally. So it all, it comes back. Um, uh, so it's, it's just, it's just invaluable. So that's, that's a big part of it. So look, if you, if you want to create wealth, Again, you've got to, I think there's so many important things, but I need to kind of put it all together. You've got to get your mindset right. You've got to create that acceptance and abundance mentality. You've got to really understand your goals and, and what you're trying to achieve if you want to create that wealth. I think that's super valuable. And then the other, the, the other thing is you've got to be able to give back, you've got to be able, and, and like giving back comes in a lot of different ways, Matt. It's, it's the charity, right? It's the charity that you're giving to. It's the financial aspect that you're giving to this charity. It's the, the physical aspect you're giving to the charity, but it's also creating value, right? It's also creating something of substance that people want to buy creating something um, that people want to be a part of, right? Creating something that is going to help enrich people's lives is going to help the future become a better place. And you might monetarily gain from that and that's okay. You know, so it, it has to do with sometimes even making money it is giving back. So you, you can't close your mind off to, what giving really means. Great advice. Well, awesome. I don't have anything. Oh, I, I'm sure I do. I, I could, like you said, we could probably keep on talking about this and go on and on and on. But for time's sake, uh, I think we should probably wrap up. Do you have anything else you want to hit on real quick? No, I'll, I'll put those uh, titles of books into the show notes. And... Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, do that. I think uh, I think anybody who hasn't read those books, the, those are great books to read. I know there's a lot of other books that are out there. So I would do your research. I find, you know, there's, there's seasons of my life um, where I will read different books. I, I'll, uh, you know, as a business owner, as a real estate uh, guy, I read three types of books. One, type of book I read is real estate books. I don't read as much of those anymore as I used to. I'm reading more industry articles and stuff like that. The second type of book is, is the uh, business book, Help Me Become a Better Entrepreneur. It's a book like a, the E-Myth or something like that, right? Uh, building a story brand, um, you know, just stuff that's more nuts and bolts, right? Um, and then the, the third book is that mindset book. And so valuable to continue to read those books and keep that going in your mind. Matt, what was the book that you and I did a book uh, review on? It was something like the power of thinking big or thinking big. Or yeah. The magic of thinking big. The uh, magic Dr. of thinking David big. Schwartz. That was a great book too. Why don't you put that in the show notes? I think that was really good as, as well. So um, a lot of good mindset hacks. So, Anyways, um, so that's all I got, man. You have a fantastic rest of the day and make every day Saturday. Thanks, you too. Hey, thanks so much for listening. I appreciate you being a loyal listener. Say, I would love to have you go on to our Facebook page and subscribe, uh, give us a thumbs up, go on to iTunes or wherever you listen and give us a rating and review. Don't forget to subscribe. It's a rating and review just helps us push this out to more and more people and continue to grow our audience and hopefully positively affect a ton of people out there that really need this and, and want this. So uh, the other thing I've got for you is a free ebook on my website. So go on to venture D 
VentureDeepProperties.com, VentureDeepProperties.com, and download our free ebook on real estate and on syndication. And I've got some data points in there, some really good stuff for you. So I'd love to have you take a look at that. It's free. I'm not expecting anything from it. Uh, and, and also, look, if you want some help in multifamily, want some help learning, growing, getting your business off the ground, I would love to talk to you about what it would look like uh, to work with me potentially and see if that's a good fit. So you can go up to coachwithdex.com and check that out and uh, we can definitely have a, uh, a call. Thanks a lot for listening. You make it a fantastic rest of the day. I'll catch you on the next episode.